Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shiva Energy Core Faculty for the College of Health Sciences, Public Policy, and Wellbeing Diversity. And in this segment, what I, I will attempt to do is provide you with how precisely you can use geospatial technologies to create school-based initiatives. And so when you're thinking about uh, health education or health promotion, you have to know what exactly is going on at the level, at the local level. So this is a school, it's called a school-based health alliance, child health and education mapping tool. And so this health alliance, children health and education mapping tool was developed in partnership with Health Landscape, uh, allowing users to harness the power of GIS technology for data-driven decision-making county level information on child health, education, and socioeconomic status is available to be searched, mapped, downloaded, and compared to national averages. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a demonstration quick after this. Public school and school-based health center locations as well as other healthcare facilities can be mapped, filtered, and key characteristics displayed. So again, this is uh, a, a good tool for uh, policymakers for advocacy, fundraise with effective visuals, uh, collaborate with, learn from others. So this is good for not only health education, but community health behavior change, behavior um, and uh, psychology um, all wrapped in one. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, um, this is called the School-Based Health Alliance. The, on the top left corner, uh, the, and then it's the National Voice for School-Based Health Care, uh, which is very um, appealing sort of um, uh, slogan. Let's look at Child Health and Education Indicators. And, so you can take a look at some of the demographic and social indicators. Uh, you can look at the health indicators. And, we'll, and just for starters, we're going to do health indicators. And I'm not going to go over too many of these. Um, but if you try to look at a certain state, First of all, let's look at the STI rate. And then we can actually go into a specific state here. And then that will zoom in on that. Sometimes it takes a bit of time, but there we go. Uh, so this is showing you um, in the state of Georgia what's going on. Uh, and if you click on these, especially these blue areas, you can see the STI rates 598.6. And you take a look over here, 479 is actually the uh, in the average. and so this rate is per 100,000, it's not an actual number. Uh, it's, it's comparing each one, you know it's equal, that's how you know. Uh, 491.3, which is again higher than 479, which is why these are blue. Then let's take a look at teen birth rate here. And Georgia is actually known for one of the highest teen birth rates uh, in, in the country. We have it. So 27 is the teen birth rate, uh, and uh, most of Georgia is actually, especially southern Georgia and around Augusta, um, there's teen birth rates that are higher. In fact, most of Georgia is it's covered in that. Most of Georgia has teen birth rates that are higher. Let's take a look at Macon, uh, and teen birth rate is 38.7, which is higher than the 27 or 3 uh, average. So there you have it. Uh, this was a bit more 
challenging due to the difficulty in clicking on the check marks. Uh, so I hope this wasn't too distracting. This was actually from the County Health Rankings 2021. Uh, so there are other sources through which you can access this. Um, however, this is your one-stop shop to understand health, education, and socioeconomic status indicators at the county level uh, where you can create policy and understand how to do so. Uh, so this is actually you can do layering and everything on this and also print this. Thank you for listening.